Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Living Astrology with Janet Hickox. It's time to grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back and relax, so we can chat about what is happening up in the stars above this week. Uh, can you believe it? We It is now the third full week of April. I know I've been busy and I've been distracted by, you know, family matters uh, these last few weeks. So I think the time is just flying by without me even really recognizing it. As you can tell, I'm back in my own environment today, which feels really good. I got back in, to my home late yesterday afternoon um, after spending quite a time at my sister's house. <laughs> You know, the the process of dying is not a straight line. Definitely not. In this experience that I'm having with her, there are these ups and downs. Sometimes there's the hills and then there's the valleys. And then there's the up and down that seems more jagged. This weekend was the jagged one. And uh, yet there seems to be some sort of reawakening of her verbal center in her brain. Coming out with full sentences and full thoughts that let you know she had been listening and taking in whatever the conversation was around her, which has not been happening in a very long time. And I, yeah, yeah, it's one of those things, right? Where you're just like gobsmacked. I was sitting next to her at breakfast yesterday. She looks at me and she says, oh boy, I feel like I need to go lay down and sleep. I mean, she hasn't said like a string of words like that that makes sense in so very long. And this is the weekend that we were having, you know, at the same time with a lot of the regular dementia types of um, symptoms, the yelling and the um, anger bursts and uh, things like that. So, I just feel like I've been on this roller coaster and I got this click yesterday in my brain that said, you need to go back home. You need to get back on your own life. You need to get back on your own business. And I can still support my sister and my brother-in-law. I still will make trips across the mountains to stay with them. But I can't just set my whole life uh, aside. If I was in my 20s or 30s, I don't know, I might be able to do that and get away with it. But I'm in my, you know, early 60s. I I I can't do that. I've got to I've got to keep my own life going here and as easy as it was to just set up outside at their house and do my broadcast on Friday, it was still fraught with peril. <laughs> right? As I'm being dive bombed by wasps. <laughs> There is a lot of sound in the background and uh, the, 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 the internet signal wasn't all that great outside. When I looked at the playback later, it was like all wobbly. It was kind of funny, but, you know, you do what you got to do. So today we have some things to talk about. We're actually going into what is a quiet week compare in comparison to the other weeks we've been in, um, at least until we get to Friday. So, you know, take some deep breaths. <sighs> Pat yourselves on the back for getting this far. And perhaps as I did this morning, getting these clicks that it's now time to take action on something that maybe you've been waiting to uh, do, or maybe having gotten the, the internal uh, click or the mind click that says take action, right? That was what happened to me this morning. So I took action on something that I've been sort of waffling on for a little bit. So now, if that's happening for you, you um, can certainly take those next steps forward. So this morning, we're going to talk about um, the the energies of the week as, as we're waiting for the next big things on Friday and Saturday. And that starts with the moon in Cancer today. I mean, the moon has been in Cancer since Sunday. But the moon is in Cancer today, actually since Saturday. Uh, the moon is in Cancer until uh, my 4 uh, or my uh, 724 p.m. tonight. That for those of you on the East Coast will be 1024 p.m tonight. And we'll have a void, of course, moon in the midst of that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then the moon will transition into Leo. So 
we'll, we'll feel this inner shift, right, that happens between these two signs, which are very different. And I want to take a look at what the gates are for the moon's transits. We don't always get to do that because there's been so many things to talk about. I'm not going to look at them each in detail, but kind of give us a bigger picture of what the moon is doing through the template of your human design chart. And then uh, we'll be talking about the energy of the week in terms of human design. Uh, the gates three uh, and 50 are the ones that get activated this week. Interesting that the gate of innovation is activated before the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which we will also talk about through both astrology and somewhat, and that'll be a bit of a review because we did kind of talk about that over the course of time. And also through the human design gate 23 that it's a part of. And then we'll talk about the sun's move into the sign of Taurus. Always a good time of year uh, when the sun moves into the gate or into the area of the zodiac representing Mother Earth, right? feet on the ground and practical steps to move forward. So let me say good morning to those of you who are joining us. I saw Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel first this morning. Good morning to you and Jamon. Good to see you. Debbie says April is flying. Yes, indeed. TD Hawk, thank you for sending love. Um, it's the rash, the last rush of cohesive thoughts, Jamon says, and cohesive thoughts. Yeah, maybe we could, Jamon, talk about um, this time period as being the last big undoing, right? The undoing. I'm going to think about that while we're talking this morning. I'm getting chills thinking about that. Uh, thankful for some quiet time. Yeah, me too. Good morning, Tom. It's good to see you. Chester's mom, good morning. Christine Buckingham, good morning. Um, so let's get into it, shall we? So the first up on our chat this morning is about the transiting moon and cancer. Now, as all of you know, cancer is a sign that is water, right? It's a water sign. And it is the sign where the moon is the most empowered. It is her home rulership, right? So this is a, a home sign. And when a planet moves through a home sign, it is more strong, right? It is more impactful, in our lives. So if you look to the area of your chart where cancer sits, that's what's being highlighted. And cancer is the sign that rules home and family, traditions, our emotional sensitivity, um, our nurturing, compassionate qualities. And so these things get triggered a bit while the moon is moving through the sign. So first up on our list is emotional sensitivity. You know, the moon in Cancer is kind of moody. And uh, moody, by moody, I mean, you know, it is up and down. Oh, <coughs> ah, pardon me. I forgot to take my allergy pill this morning. Ah. Uh, so emotional sensitivity in terms of we're wearing our hearts on our sleeves a bit, and that means we may be more sensitive to things that people say. Uh, we ourselves may be more emotionally dis dis demonstrative in uh, our families, actually in any setting, really, because emotion is, is what is coming forward while the moon is moving through here. Um, we may feel more nurturing or more caring of uh, people around us more empathic. And because cancer is a water sign, we may also be more intuitive, right? Our intuitive sensitivities are up, just like our emotional sensitivity is up. And we hold a heightened awareness now of the emotional needs for ourselves and for others, right? That's an important part. So there is a home and family focus. And, you know, that's because the sign of cancer is associated with home. Everything, the structures and the foundation that come from belonging in a family, right, or belonging to a family, having family, right? It's all about that. And there's often a strong desire for us to connect with family, our loved ones, and, you know, extended family as well. It's not just your blood. It could be your friends that constitute a family for you. And the moon moving through cancer brings us, you know, more of the desire to connect there. And we may also create a sense of emotional security more with those people that we are around. There's also nurturing energy, 
the I want to take care of you. I want to feed you. I want you to be comfortable. Let me prop your feet up on a pillow. Let me make you, as Terry does every morning for me, a cup of coffee. And let me, you know, take care, right? We, mothering energy. So the moon in Cancer gives us that the nurturing of the bonds between us and more of that mothering, uh, wanting to create comfort and a coziness that is home, right? Everybody has in their heart something that reminds them of home. Like it might be a smell, it might be a food, it might be a favorite chair or pillow. I was really excited to come home to my own bed. <laughs> I took my pillow with me this time. I was smart and I did sleep better, but it, nothing is like your own bed, right? So the nurturing archetype energy is very high during the moon's transit through cancer, providing support for others, caring for others and all that. People could be drawn to doing acts of kindness out of a sense of compassion, wanting to nurture those around them. That's just a part of this. Mood swings. The moon already, we already know about the moon and her changing face, right? In 28 days, that moon has gone from the new phase all the way around to the full phase and back again to the new phase, giving us access to what seems like a lot of different energies, right? The day changes by the, the placement of the moon. Um, and it, that can translate into moodiness, fluctuating feelings. Um, it's important for us to acknowledge those feelings as they come up, those shifts, of emotion, but without getting too caught up in expressing of that emotion. It might be good to just acknowledge right now, I'm feeling kind of sad. I'm feeling really joyful. I'm feeling really mad. You know, whatever it is that you're feeling, acknowledge that to yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to go out there and blast that emotion or that feeling to the world, but certainly acknowledging it to yourself. But then, you know, taking it one step further, and making it a reason for self-care or for self-reflection or nurturing of yourself, right? To, um, you know, really dig into what is the, the best for you, what makes you feel good. This is a time for that as well as the caring outside of yourself to those other people in your life. Now, Cancer is a highly intuitive sign. So when the moon is here, intuition is heightened as well. And pay attention to those gut feelings and inner guidance. I did something this morning I didn't expect to do this morning because I got this gut feeling and it was a gut feeling of joy when I thought about doing, the, taking this step and I did it before I lost that feeling. Only because it's already been in my mind. It's already been through my emotional center. It's already been something I've worked through. And I just said, okay, today's the day. Boom, it's done. So pay attention, right? If you're getting that gut feeling that it's time to take action, because remember, for the last two weeks, actually, like maybe even the whole of the month of April, we've had, you know, these various go signs coming up, green lights telling us it's time to go, but then Mercury's in retrograde. So it slows the process down. It might even present as a stop sign for us, instead of moving forward, we felt more like, okay, we, we got to hold space. I hope you're not holding space because Mercury is retrograde. I hope you're using your, your mind and your intuition and listening to what is right for you. Because for me, I have Mercury in retrograde already in my natal chart. So this Mercury retrograde time is sometimes the best time for me to take action. And I was listening this morning to what that gut instinct was saying and took the chance to act. And for yourself, that might be different. So you don't have to be a carbon copy of the astrology signature that I'm talking about and how it's impacting me. But listen deeper to what is going on within you so you'll know what is right for you and what is the correct next steps for you to take. So overall, while the moon is transiting cancer, it is a time to honor our emotions. How are we feeling? to connect with our loved ones, right? Not just, hey, mom, hi, uh, but really connect with them on some level. Create a nurturing environment for yourself and for others, and even a nurturing environment in the home, right? Home and family is what cancer is all about. Now, when, interestingly enough, I, I was thinking about the gates of the human design chart that the moon moves through 
uh, while in the sign of Cancer. And the first gate it moves through is one of the gates of love, right? As uh, Because the, the Cancer gateway is a solstice, right? The summer solstice for us in the Northern Hemisphere and the winter solstice for those of you down under. Um, and we know that those solstices and equinoxes are the time that brings us back into a loving kind of uh, way of being. Uh, gives us an opportunity to realign ourselves according to love. So the first gate that the moon moved through in Cancer was the gate 15, which is called the gate of the love of humanity or the gate of compassion. So we move into Cancer with that feeling of compassion and empathy, nurturing and love of self and others in a way. Uh, but it's just the love of how we take care of each other, right? So then as, and, and that's, by the way, in the G center of the uh, uh, human design template, the identity center, it's a diamond shape and it's right center of the human design chart. And it shows what it is that we attract to us. It's a monopole and its monopole is only attractive in force. A monopole meaning G center is gravity center. And the gravity here is about the monopole pulling people, experiences, opportunities to us in that center solar or center uh, of the seed of the soul, right? The seed of your soul. And then for the next three passes through the gates during cancer, it is the root center that is getting triggered. And the root center is interesting because it's the center of impulses to act right? It's not the action. It's not the sustainability factor for those actions. It's the prompt. <laughs> it's the push or the pressure to move energy from the core base of the earth, right? From where you are interactive with the base of the earth up and out, right? Out to either the spleen center where we're fielding the need for success perhaps or survival over to the emotional center where we would have to realign with our emotion for creativity, for uh, ability to be creative and move energy from there up to the throat and or to the sacral where that prompt becomes action, which then goes all through the human design. So the next three gates of cancer, the 52, the 39 and the 53 are all in the root center. Prompts, right? to move. And now where the moon is located, we are in the last two gates of the transit of cancer, uh, the moon through cancer, and that is the gate 62 on the throat center and the gate 56 also on the throat center. So now we're moving energy up and out through our voices or through creating something. So cancer is a very valuable moon energy for us to really get into our feels, know what's good for us, what's right for us, and then be able to take those actions appropriately as time goes on right through the transit. Now the gate 62 is called the gate of details. It is where we need to see the little picture as well as the big picture, right? It's logic. It is the steps that are in a logical, I was going to go backwards, do the logical order of the steps that take us from A to D to C or Z, right? Uh, and then the gate 56, which is a storytelling gate. The moon will move through a gate of stories later on today on her final exit uh, as she's exiting through the sign uh, of Cancer into Leo. She sits in the throat center creating a new story. How beautiful, right? A new story of who we are, what we could be, sharing our experiences. The gate 56 is a teaching gate where we teach through story, perhaps, uh, or we learn from other people's stories. And it gives us an opportunity to rewrite the script, right? What's the script been telling you? Uh, it's time to rewrite that. Now, the moon will be in void, I said, from 423. I don't know if I said it, but I'm going to now. From 423 p.m. Pacific time until 724 p.m. I love it when the void comes at the end of the day because I don't notice it so much, right? It's the end of the work day. For those of you on the East Coast or further east from me, you know, your day's winding down as well. And um, the moon leaving us 
uh, in that void later in the day can be a time just for cozying up, maybe for doing some self-reflection about what the transit has been bringing to you, that kind of thing. And then goes into the sign of Leo. And, you know, when the moon is in Leo, it brings fire. Now we go from water of cancer to fire of Leo. And now we lock um, arms with the sun because the sun is the ruler of Leo. So the moon is the ruler or the ruling planet for cancer. The sun is the one for Leo. So we kind of can see, you've seen those symbols, uh, the pictures of the sun and the moon sort of uh, superimposed over it in its maybe crescent form. And they kind of look like they're hugging one another, right? That's the sun moon. That is Cancer Leo. We're moving from this more emotional energy into, okay, let me look, think about it this way. We're moving from the energy that creates the foundation for caring for love and family, the, the very foundation that then allows us to move into that leonine energy and have the ability to become self-expressive, the confidence to go out into the world and be our true selves, right? To be the sun. Interesting that in the, in the path of the year, our connection to the moon comes before the connection to the sun. And there's a reason for that because there has to be this solid foundation first. We see it in human design all the time. The earth in that case is the one that has to be grounded in order for us to rise to the height of the sun, right? To really grasp our purpose or the purpose of the energy, let's say, for that week or for that day, okay? So the foundation is set then we move into Leo where we're able then to have some fun, right? Play with the energies of our creativity. So in Leo, it's the fiery expressive energy and that brings that to our emotions, to our interactions, to our opportunities. And there's a dramatic expressiveness that comes up with Leo. Um, Leo's ruled by the sun, as I said. So there's this fire and the, as we're expressing the highest and best of ourselves, perhaps. We may feel more bold, more confident, more able to, you know, be ourselves. And they, there's an outgoingness that comes with the moon in Leo. And it's um, wanting to shine and be noticed for your gifts, for your, just for you, for your triumphs, right? All of that. It is creative inspiration when the moon is moving through Leo. It's associated with creativity and self-expression. And Leo brings it to the individual. So it's your own individual expression. It's your own artistry. It's your own gift of gab. It's your own gift of fill in the blank, right? Whatever it is. And there's a strong urge for us to be in that creator mode when the moon is moving through Leo. And then to share our talents with the world to serve as a path of service. Interesting because service isn't a word we normally think of with Leo, but inside of Leo is the need to be recognized and valued for the contribution they are making to the world, i.e. they want to, they want to be seen as serving, right? So there's that while the moon is moving through here, it's a favorable time for us to express ourselves in any way, through art, through words, performances, uh, through business uh, growth, whatever it is. And again, I, I touched on uh, recognition. Leo is a sign that loves the center stage. They want to be the center of attention. So a little, you know, you may not be a Leo sun. You may not even be a Leo moon. But there may be a feeling for you over these next few days of this week of wanting to be seen, right? Recognized. And there's nothing wrong with recognition, by the way. This isn't a, a self-serving sort of recognition that we see sometimes when Leo's gone wrong. This is wanting to be appreciated, perhaps, for your gifts that you've shared for the um, time that you've spent sharing of yourself or of your gifts with others, that kind of thing. And there's a natural inclination then for us to step up a little bit uh, and showcase 
our own talents, as it were, to let others know, you know, what's up with us. There's generosity and warmth here. Leo is a warm hearted sign. It is uh, a tendency then for us during this time to be more generous with our time, with our love, uh, with, you know, giving of ourselves, uh, our resources. And we also have the desire at the same time to spread that warmth and generosity to others. It's a great time for acts of kindness and generosity. There's also dignity and pride, the lion, the symbol of Leo, pride. And when the moon is here, there is a strong sense of self-respect and confidence if we feel we are not getting the self-respect or getting respect, not self-respect, we give that to ourselves. But if we are not receiving respect, if we are not receiving recognition after having done things, this is where the negative side of the lion comes out, right? This is where we get to narcissism, perhaps, or arrogance, perhaps. Um, overly asserting ourselves into a situation um, to be seen, right? If we can't get the attention and the love and adoration in the positive, then we'll often shift our Leo energy into getting it in the negative way, right? Positive or negative, there's this craving for that center of attention kind of energy. So overall, Leo is a time for play, for fun, for expression, for vacation, <laughs> for having a good time, celebration, right? I love that Leo is a sign of celebration. It's expressing uh, of itself. So express your creativity and share your talents with confidence and step out, right? And it's a time for vibrancy. There's a, a liveness that comes out here right? That's joyful over, almost. And it's encouraging of us to share our light to the world, right? And if you're not getting the appreciation of what it is that you're sharing with the world, then maybe you've got to check the audience, right? Is it the wrong audience? Are you surrounding yourself by the wrong people? We get to look at all of that during the moon's transit through Leo. Now, the Leo gates in your human design are all, the first three gates that the moon hits are all in the throat center. So you could see now why Leo is associated with self-expression. There's a lot of communication, creativity, expression, metabolism, energy that comes up with the Leo um, moon, right? Mo moving through Leo. It's the gate 56, the gate 31, and the gate 33. These are all about the stories we tell, the history of, uh, of humanity and how we present that narrative to ourselves, but also to others. And as well, the gate uh, 31, which is a gate of leadership. How do we lead in our lives, right? And then it shifts to the G center at gate seven, which is also a leadership gate, but a leadership sort of from behind the scenes, a supportive collaborative energy. So the moon touches on first leadership energy when it's, you know, you're the face of the, of the leader. And then also what happens when we are in collaboration with others in leadership ways. And then moves to the Ajna at gate four, the ideas, the possibilities, and then on the cusp of, as it is transiting out of Leo and moving into Virgo, uh, the sacral at gate 29, the gate of saying yes, commitment, right? So it's an interesting path that the moon takes through Leo, um, kind of prompting us to be creative, creative from the soul, if you want to say that, from the G center, and then letting the mind take us in through possibilities what more is possible, and then finally into the sacral where we can take action, right? Take action by saying yes. All right. Any questions? Good morning, J-Lo. Good morning, Teddy. Um, Chester's mom, I have not yet done my human design chart. We'll work on that before Friday's stream. I've done a regular chart, but always have a hard time reading my chart and houses. Okay, well, that gives me... Um, 
that gives me ideas of what kind of courses that I can start teaching all of you. Terry, good morning. Family does matter. It does indeed. And I missed you so much. Teddy, audio tracked okay. Your video is freezing. That is not on my end. TJ, that is on your end. Check your uh, cache in your um, internet. Maybe it's time to clear it out. And let's see, Tom, uh, they're talking to each other. Uh, as a Gemini sun and moon, I have always loved Leo's. Uh, LS, aka Chester's mom, I don't know how old you are, but any of your uh, uh, possible that a lot of uh, Leo planets in your chart might have progressed into Gemini. And by transit or by progression, I'm guessing some of those Gemini planets have progressed into Leo. So it's kind of interesting because that same thing goes on in my own chart, right? I am a Gemini, but I have a preponderance of planets in Leo, and most of them have moved into uh, Gemini and, uh, pro you know, through progression. And it's kind of interesting to watch how all of that plays out in our lives. Uh, TD Hawk, wow, and I have been working on a new jewelry design that's supportive, uplifting, and have been working on putting volunteer services together for the community. How very nice. How very good. But that's a great blend of the Cancer Moon and the potential of the Leo Moon and putting that to work for you, especially when later in the weekend, the Moon moves into uh, the sign of Virgo. And then we begin to express the work, the service aspect of um, the things that you are creating. Fun stuff. Okay, I don't see any other questions here, but thank you all for joining me here. Uh, now, let's talk about, what did I want to do next? Now I want to go to the human design for the sun and earth uh, as we go forward into the week. So today is the last day of the sun at the gate 42 and the earth at the gate 32. And I'm sorry, we really didn't get to talk about that much. Uh, I don't even know if we talked about it, but the gate 42 is called the gate of celebration, right? So it is the representation of where we might have come into an opportunity midway and we can take it to completion. It's really related to completion, right? What we start, we complete. That's not to say that everything we start, we're meant to complete. So don't get me wrong there. But this that particular gate really celebrates the completion. And I think that's an interesting thing based on what I was feeling this morning. That I'm completing a cycle. I'm completing a path. It's not over for sure, but I'm completing something and then moving on to the next path. Like I, I'm bridging between two time uh, frames. So maybe that's what it is that we can think of with the 42 and the 32. Now the 32 is a gate on the spleen center. Remember the earth has been transiting through all of the gates of the spleen. So one by one, various fears have been triggered, perhaps limits, um, blocks in your own you know, energy. And the block at the gate 32 is about the fear of failure. So maybe we are holding ourselves back from taking action, from completing something out of a sense of fear. And the sense of fear might even be the fear of success. Ooh, what happens if I'm successful? Hands down, it's called the gate of fear of failure, right? They're, it's about failure, not succeeding. But I think sometimes people are more afraid of succeeding than they are of failing. What happens if I'm thrust into the limelight because I've done something really well and now there's all these hooks and, and things in my time and in my energy and so I might be a little hesitant about what success might mean. But for the most part, it is really the fear of failing that holds us back. So that's what we've been dealing with. Now, as we go into tomorrow, we start a new week with the sun in the gate three, which is called the gate of innovation. In um, the gene keys, the shadow of the gate three is called chaos because there's a bit of um, chaos anytime we go to start something new. You know, let's say, e even think about the times you started a new job or a new training. There's always a little bit of chaos in the beginning. It's hard to get your feet under you, 
right? There's some back work you need to do perhaps or new rules that you're learning or new ways of doing things. So getting your feet going, it's not like we plop into something new and we're just like off and running. Right. There's always a little bit of time to get the juice up. It's even the same thing in your car, right? If you're getting, you get in the car and you start the engine and you back out and you start to move, right? It takes time to get up to the speed limit of, of the road you're going to be on. So that's what the gate three is. It's a gate of innovation, but there's a little bit of chaos that begins in the beginning as we're trying to get our um, wheels running, right? Get going. And this is a time, a week. This is fascinating in the timing of all of this to focus for, uh, for uh, on, blah, 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 to focus on new ideas and be inspired to create something new, to go somewhere new, to do something new, to be innovative. All right. Be innovative in your own life. This energy sits on the sacral. This is the energy of doing, of being, of vitality, of life force. So where are you going to put that life force? Right. That's the key. It encourages us to explore, to experiment with new ways of doing things. What have you not yet tried in your life that may bring success? Right. Do, do you dare to do it? Right? There's a daring piece here, right? The sun is in Aries and Aries is bold energy, right? Until Friday, the sun is in Aries. So most of this energy is still Aryan energy of being confident, being bold, being explorative, um, creative, right? In, in, in moving forward in some way. So the sun at the gate three is going to drive all of us to think innovatively and to move outside of conventional boundaries, perhaps doing things in a way you've never done them. In human design, we call this mutative energy. Mutative meaning changing. This is the energy that changes us, right? That is innovative. It's that I should have had a V8 or I could have had a V8 moment, right? Where the epiphany can come in. But we it's not like in the 47 when it stays up in the mind, you know, the epiphany of the mind of the, you know, brain dump that comes in and that epiphany. This is more like I know what way to go now. That I had that this morning. I now know what way to go. Okay? That's what this is all about. Now we have to juxtapose that with the earth. The earth is sitting at the gate 50 also on the spleen center. So inferred in that is some fear. What's the fear in the gate 50? The gate 50 is called the gate of values. And uh, it is a, an energy of nurturing, of teaching, of, of taking care. It is a very feminine energy in human design. It is uh, definitely the mother energy, right? So it kind of runs kind of along with the moon in Cancer. Uh, we have this mothering energy a little bit that is continuing. Now, it's not just about mothers, right? Any any person can become a, a mothering or nurturing individual. But the problem with this gate comes in when we um, hold too much responsibility for others' success, right? And we fear that we're going to fail uh, in our responsibilities to our family, to our friends, to our students, to our, you fill in the blank, right? So the gate 50 is about teaching values. It is about the, the template of a civilization or of a tribe. It's tribal energy. So we can call it tribe. We can call it family. We could call it community. We could call it nation. It's the energy of the values that we hold collectively that we then teach to our younger generations, that they then teach to their younger generations, right? And we use those as the um, template for how we interact with one another. What is legal, let's say, in a society? What is um, frowned upon in a society, what is, you know, accepted in a, a society or a family, a community, that kind of thing. So the gate 50 is very much focused on the practicality and the stability of training up the tribe, 
right? Or of setting up the tribe for success or setting up the family for success. And it highlights what the core values are of, uh, the, of the family or of the, the group. It also highlights what the material security is. How is it that we earn money? How is it that we share of our resources? That type of thing. It promotes our building a solid foundation in our families, in our communities, in our tribes, by sharing values, by teaching, by caretaking. But the key here is it's not about our controlling those people that we're teaching. It is not about, um, you know, smother, mothering those people all the way to the end. It's really about training them up, teaching them to be responsible adults, and moving on, right? And becoming responsible for themselves, accountable. The gate on the other side, the gate 27, is called the gate of accountability, being accountable for themselves. So that's your job as a parent, right, is to train up your children so they can become responsible and accountable adults. So that's what energy we're dealing here. So we're promoting of the, the, the building of that foundation that supports the innovation that can come when the sun is moving through the gate three. So we have balance needed between innovation and practicality, right? It's no good to, you know, bring in something that is way out there if we don't have the solid foundation to support it yet. It would fail, right? It would be too chaotic in the beginning. The shadow energy of this gate, chaos. Um, it's an opportunity for us uh, this next week to kind of merge our creativity with stability, with practicality. So we're being creatively practical or practically creative, <laughs> whichever way you want to put that. And it encourages us to, you know, promote some groundbreaking ideas, ground them in, right? To be able to take the time. Any mutation, by the way, takes time right? Takes time. Change takes time. If you decided today to stop drinking, let's say, or stop smoking, it takes time, right? And in the beginning, it's hard. You might have, you know, failures. And then you're like, no, no, I really want to, you know, be free of cigarettes. And so it takes time and work and effort, right? But it's still worthwhile. That's the key. Innovation takes time. But if you don't start, you never get there. So this is the energy that prompts us, moves us out into it. And there's a bit of innocence that comes through this gate three that I always find interesting. It's one of the key words in human design that we hear about this gate. Uh, because in any new venture, we sort of kind of can go blindly into it. We just kind of have some faith that this is the right path. I did something this morning myself, a decision I made about my own business that I took steps on that I'm just, I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know how it will work. I don't know what will come of it, but I innocently said, yes, I'm going that direction. So we'll see what happens, right? But I'm open with innocence. It's not naivete, right? It's this, no, nothing's tarnished the activity yet, right? There isn't anything written in stone yet on it. It's an open book, right? And I get to write what comes next. So I really love this combination of energies that we're going into. So we want to make meaningful progress in the gate three and the gate 50 help us to make that meaningful progress. All right. Uh, it takes time to move a mountain. Exactly, Tom. And that's funny because at my sister's house, there is, no, I mean, it must be maybe, I don't know, a quarter of a mile away, but I hear it very loudly. There's a quarry. And what they're doing is they're breaking up the basalt. The, the bedrock is basalt. And they crush it up and they use it for roadbed or for um, sanding the streets in the winter when it's icy and cold. and They've built a mountain 
like a, a whole mountain range of this dirt, right? And I'm thinking about how, how long is it going to take time to move a mountain? Well, it's been about three weeks for them to have done it. And now they're starting another one adjacent to the mountain that they've already built. It was just kind of weird how that goes. And then we'll see in the winter time over there that they slowly, you know, take away the, the, the basalt and the mountain disappears. Uh, hi, Thailand. It's good to see you. Or Jacqueline. Um, her kitty is a Leo, she says. Leo cat. How perfect. Uh, TD Hawk, hoping this means it will be moving forward more smoothly now. Uh, good morning, Jolie, before I answer that. Smoothly is a relative word, I think. Um, I think we evolve and we grow TD in a sort of uh, two steps forward and one step back sort of, of a path. And I, all of us do, right? Because sometimes the very block that comes up that seems to be something stopping you from moving on is affording you time to integrate what you've already learned, to reevaluate, is this the next right step for me? Uh, is there a different step that I need to take or is there a different direction? Do I need to change the plan somewhat? So everything for us literally as humans is about two steps forward and one step back, but you're still a step forward. So while you have progress, it's not always as smooth as we would hope it to be because along the way we're growing, right? Along the way we're encountering pitfalls and roadblocks and uh, road construction, right? That slows us down. So it is impossible really to go the growth path without having those times of not smooth waters, let's say, right? So, but at this point in time, we have the need, we have the, I think it's imperative. It's imperative. That's a great word for all of us to move forward, to take those next steps, even if it, we risk failure or we risk falling or we risk losing something, right? Because that's the energy of the time. No new creation happens if you stay in the same rut. No new creation happens if you don't take that next step, right? If you keep doing the same things that you've always done, you will keep getting the same results you've always gotten. And somewhere along the line, that is the definition of insanity, right? Because we have this expectation of a new result, but we didn't do anything different to get that new result. So we keep banging our head up against a wall and expecting that that wall is going to break. But instead, your head breaks, right? So we have to, we have to be careful about that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, progress, but it comes in fits and starts. And we also encounter those little bumps uh, along the way. All right. Now on the Friday, the 19th, the sun moves into Taurus, right? And that's the first day of the week where we actually have planets in an alignment where we end up with, let's see, Mercury conjunct Venus that day, Mars in a sextile to Jupiter, which means that Mars is also in a sextile to uh, Uranus. And that is the day before the great Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So we see that that conjunction is a sextile to Mars. So this is why I believe that the sun being in the gate three is so fortuitous for us all. Because I think, you know, sometimes you can go a long way before you hit that next roadblock. And that's where we are, right? We can really move ahead in this because Jupiter and Uranus conjunction are also about innovation and revolution. Okay. So let's talk first about the transiting sun in Taurus, uh, because while the sun is moving through any sign, it highlights the core values that are qualities that are associated with that sign. And Taurus is an earthy and stable sign. So what are we coming into? We're moving out of the sun in this Aries energy that's bold and initiating and explorative and 
confidently, you know, setting out on a new journey. And boom, we come into Taurus, which is very grounded energy. So it's stability and groundedness. And the need for Taurus energy for all of us, whether you're a Taurus or not, doesn't matter. You have Taurus somewhere in your chart, is to have a place of stability and to focus on what's practical now, right? We've done the initiating. We have the ideas. We have the inspiration. Now comes the work, right? Taurus, earth, work. And the desire for stability means that we're building something. Don't you think that's a foundation that we begin to build to support the bold initiatives that we took just in the the sun's movement through Aries? Taurus is ruled by Venus, so we also have the sensual side of things, the love of pleasure. So when the sun is in Taurus, there can be an emphasis on indulging in life's pleasures, the things that make us feel good. And there is no shame in it, right? I bought new candles the other day just because I wanted to smell something sweet, something lovely. I bought new soaps that were lilac scented because I wanted to smell lilac. That is a Taurian trait, right? To put the comfort of home, maybe good food, good pillows, um, all of the luxurious experiences that we can have, all of the sensual delights. It's a time to savor those things, the simple pleasures in life. I was so excited yesterday when I got home, as I was walking up my walkway, the azalea right in front of my house was blooming bright red. I was like, oh, beautiful. Such a simple pleasure, right? Something that greets you with that feeling of this is good. This feels fine, right? Taurus is also associated with material security. So we have an emphasis while the sun is in Taurus on money, on resources, on banking, on the economy, on all of the the financial uh, tools that we have, debt and credit, banks, and in terms of interest rates and all of that are very much focused on. We are also individually maybe focusing on building uh, financial security, um, acquiring those things that we think of as creature comforts, the things that, you know, make us feel good. And we may be more cautious with our resources during this time as well, because Taurus does things in a much more um, practical way right? It's not always practical to just go spend a thousand dollars on something when you have maybe bills that have yet to be paid for. So, right, practical, practical. Persistence and determination. Taurus is a stubborn sign. It's known for its uh, perseverance and its determination. So all of us during the sun's transit here are you know, putting more of that tenacity out into the world. There's a steady and patient energy here as well. It's not, it's not uh, as driven as say a Capricorn earth energy might be, but instead it's encouraging us to stay the path, stay the course and persistence in pursuing the goals uh, that we have and to work diligently towards those long-term objectives, those things that we want, the desires that we have. And of course, Taurus as an earth sign is connected to nature, deeply connected to the natural world, um, the land, the waters, the growing things, plants and animals, just life in general. We have a heightened appreciation perhaps of nature and the beauty of the physical world. It's a good time to spend time outdoors, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting warmer, the days are getting longer, it's more uh, enjoyable to be outdoors, to see the natural beauty of the world, to cultivate a sense of harmony and balance with nature or with the natural rhythms of life. So overall, when the sun is transiting through Taurus, we focus on stability, building something on pleasure and creature comforts, if you will, what makes us happy in our day-to-day living, the practical aspects of daily life, right? Buying the food, take, paying the bills, uh, focusing on life in general. Um, it's a favorable time for building security in your life, whether that's financial or health or what, wherever Taurus is in your chart. Um, and enjoy the simple pleasures of life 
Taurus is the sign of the simple pleasures, being grounded in the present moment. All right, any questions about that? Um, T.D. Hawk, awesome. Okay, suggestion to look at the right audience was a big ping in me. Awesome, I love it when that happens. Um, and you know what, for all of us, the pings must be coming. You can't tell me that you're sitting there in a holding pattern without ideas or inspiration. It just can't be possible. What might be happening is any reticence you have to take action, to take that next step. So, you know, hit me up and let me know how things are happening for you in your life. Are you in a holding pattern? Are you stuck? Are you fearful of taking the next step? Are you totally overwhelmed and confused about what next direction? I'd love to hear about that. So put that in the comments if you are listening. While I put out a little bit of a reminder here about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, I mean, literally everybody is out there in the world talking about this right now. It's that monumental or momentous, let's say, of a time in our lives. And we talked about it a bit on Friday, and we've talked about it many times in passing, but I really delved into it in the astrology of 2024 because it's that important, right? It was a big signature for this year. And it's kind of an exciting event. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion, of um, evolution, especially consciousness evolution, coming together with the planet of revolution and rebellion and lightning fast change. Boom, coming together. That kind of spells that there's this potential to lift off and grow in some big ways. But these planets are happening, these two coming together really hold significant implications for the collective, but also for us as individuals, right? Because you're a part of the collective. So what piece, what fragment, what uh, fractal of the collective are you holding that you are being tasked with um, expanding and innovating, right? Because remember that Uranus is a sign of innovation, or I mean, a planet of innovation, imagination, right? Being able to grow. So first, expansion and innovation. There's a potential. You're going to see it. I already heard of um, someone who had an idea of helping correct the balance of um, heat um, on the planet by seeding clouds with uh, sea salt. And that sea salt, because it's more reflective, sends some of the heat out into the upper reaches of the atmosphere and away from creating the greenhouse effect on the planet. Whew, stellar, exciting, right? So those kinds of things, there's this potential for technological uh, innovation, revolution, sudden change, um, especially in Taurus areas, because this conjunction is happening in Taurus. And that might be themes around finances, agriculture, food production, earth-based industries, right? Earth-based stuff, which climate change is, even though it's more uh, atmospheric and stuff, it is being driven by earth-based activities or what's happening on earth, right? In her natural rhythm and cycles. So all of that. Financial revolutions, um, Taurus is associated with the banking and economy and Jupiter and uh, Uranus coming together here could signify sudden shifts in the global financial picture, including unexpected market fluctuations like what was high goes low and what was low goes high, right? They switch places, maybe new economic paradigms where we're really tired of uh, you know, the way things have been. We're tired of inflation. We're tired of... Uh, corporations holding all the power, all, all these things, right, that can be innovations in banking and currencies, including cryptocurrencies, right, alternate ways of currency, alternate ways of um, exchange, technological breakthroughs um, of all, all sorts, right, just you, you can't help but see them out there, a change perhaps in our values and beliefs, this is a biggie because Taurus is linked to our values through Venus, right? Her, Venus is the ruler of Taurus through comfort, through material world. And the conjunction of Jupiter here might challenge those existing belief systems and the societal norms, the things we've taken for granted in our societies, prompting individuals, 
prompting communities, prompting nations to reassess their priorities, especially regarding consumerism, sustainability, Tor these are Torian words, uh, and the equitable distribution of resources. So personal growth and liberation, all of these things, these are huge. And it's so interesting to see how things are building up to this. And its impact isn't just over the course of a day, nor has it just been, star it started, you know, back in the fall, right? They were coming close enough. Uh, and nor will it end on Saturday with the conjunction. It will flow into uh, even uh, later in this year. So interesting, right? Um, and this is all happening, by the way, at the gate 23 in human design called the gate of assimilation. It's on the throat center. So we have creativity here. We have this idea of taking ideas and birthing them using words in a new way, perhaps. I don't know, ideas in a new way. Should be really interesting. We are um, maybe amplifying through the throat center, the themes of innovation and breakthroughs and sudden changes in our perspectives and in our understanding of how the world works or how maybe the understanding is more of how the world should be working in a more equitable and sustainable way. That's it for me this morning, you guys. Uh, good morning, Jaina. Good morning, Terry and Terry Strauss, that is. And uh, I think I'm going to pull a card. I know it's a little after nine, but I want to pull something from the Psychic Tarot this morning. This is a deck by John Holland. And I feel like we need some insight from the intuitive realms this morning, maybe. Oh. Alrighty, so we'll pull this card. It'll represent our week. And by the way, on Friday, I will be with you and Pia and Cullen from the Pleiadian Earth Energy and Pleiadian Earth Calendar uh, will be with me. And we get, this is perfect, foundation and achievements. Look at this card. What does that tell you? I mean, what does that evoke in you? I always like to look first at the pictures and, you know, I, I first I'm a word person, so I, it's not like I ignore the words, but that picture evokes something for me. It evokes a happy ever after. It, it is the um, enjoyment of a job well done, of something that you've been through that has, you know, borne out consequences and here foundations and achievements. So let's see, that's card number four. And let's take a look at that. Okay. Well, isn't that interesting? Oh, they have it in. No, they don't. Wow, I just found an error in my book here. Because this says authority. But the card says foundation and achievements. It has the number four on it. Let's look at 14, no. Let's look at 24. Oh, I see, these are, oh, oh, this is really exciting. I just discovered that these are in different colors. There's different borders to the colors here. Okay, so that's not the physical realm. We must be in the, I apologize for the lag here, but I've gotta, I gotta take a look at this closer. This is in the spirit realm foundation and achievement. So you'll notice there's a color base around. I know it looks blue in my picture there, but it's actually purple. And maybe for you, it looks purple. But uh, in the camera there, to me, it looks like it's blue, but it's purple. And purple represents spirit. This card confirms that what you've been building is now firmly established with a strong and solid foundation. You deserve this. And it's time for you to harvest the rewards for your efforts. What you sowed, you now can reap. Be open to receive as you've worked hard and have given so much. Allow the universe to give a little back to you, for there has to be an even exchange of giving and receiving in order to prime the pump of gratitude and reinforce the law of attraction. Using the more traditional meaning in tarot, this card represents a period for celebration, peace, and prosperity. It may also imply a marriage or the buying of land or a new home. As you enjoy this time of relaxation that you so deserve, know that nothing remains stagnant and the winds of change are always at your door. 
Here we go. Foundation and achievements. Number four, which always is about foundation and boundaries and limits and, you know, holding something steady. All right, you guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, I will be here on Friday with Pia and Colin. Until then, have a great week. Bye for now.